Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Maker. It's a beautiful day to show you how to create this house shaped display case using just craft board or cardstock and the Great Maker Show and Tell. So a new Cricut Mystery Box came out the other day and inside was an adorable candy apple red Cricut cutie. This brought my collection of Cricut cuties up to 15 and I was running out of space on my pegboard shelf. They were just all hanging out homeless. So I designed a DIY display case in the shape of a house for them, able to give 10 Cricut cuties a home. And then I made a version that's a bit smaller to hold just four figures. And that version will fit the cuties or even the larger Funko Pop figures if you size it up. Basically anything lightweight up to four and three quarters inch tall will fit into this DIY display case. Now the best thing about this display case is that it requires no wood or chipboard. It's made either from craft board or cardstock. Seriously. And thanks to the folded and reinforced construction, you can make this display case from materials that you have on hand. This means it can be cut on a Cricut Explore Air as well as Maker. It's too large to fit in a toy, of course, but if you sized it way down to fit something really small, smaller than a Cricut Kitty, you could do it. Now you may be wondering which material works best cardstock or craft board. I'm going to compare both at the end of this tutorial so you can see the differences and what my recommendations are. Hint, both will work, but one will work better. Now something else really fun about this display case uh, is that it requires no glue or tape. For real. Here's the back, no glue or tape. But you can of course glue it or tape it if you wish. And I'm going to show you how to both decorate the rooms, which I did over here, and reinforce the back with a little glue if you'd like. Now while I'm using this to display my Cricut Kitties and my Funko Pop figures, you can use it for anything small and lightweight. Paper flowers will look amazing in this display case, for example. So let me show you where that you can find my DIY display case pattern and then I'm going to show you how to cut and assemble your house shaped shelves of step by step. Step 1. Get the display case pattern. Download the pattern for this project from my blog at jennifermaker.com 279. Just go to the red bar at the top and look for libraries. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the pattern by searching the page for design 279 and then click it to download an SVG cut file for cutting with a Cricut or another cutting machine or to download a printable PDF. The pattern file contains three sizes of display cases, one 3x3 three three cubby size that could hold 10 Cricut cuties, or anything about 3 inches or less, one 2x2 two two cubby case that could hold 4 Cricut cuties, and one 2x2 two two cubby case that could hold 4 Funko Pop figures, or anything about 4 and 3 quarters of an inch or less. Step 2. Cut out your display case pieces. Let me show you how to cut the craft board or cardstock for this project on a Cricut cutting machine. First, upload the SVG cut file that you downloaded in Step 1 to Cricut Design Space. If you're unsure how to unzip and upload SVG files, please watch my SVGs Made Simple training series at jennifermaker.com svgs. For this tutorial, I will cut the DIY display case pattern with the 3x3 cubbies. If you cut a 2x2 two two display case, follow the same steps and just note that you'll have two less pieces. You'll have one less horizontal floor piece and one less vertical wall piece that you'll need to fold and attach. Otherwise, it's all the same. First, decide what colors you want your pieces to be. If you're going to use all white craft board or cardstock, Change all the layers to the same color to maximize your cuts on your paper. You can do this easily in the color sync panel. Just drag windows onto the same color to change them quickly. For this tutorial, I will cut my pieces out of the same colors that you see in the pattern file. So that's white, yellow, pink, orange, blue, and green. So it's easier for you to understand which piece I am working with in the video. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Note that the score lines are preset and pre-attached to their base layers, and this file is ready to go. Just click Make It, then click Continue, and select your material. Now if you use Craft Board, you'll want to select Craft Board as your material setting. 
For cardstock, I recommend you use the medium cardstock setting for 80 pound cardstock and the heavy cardstock setting for the 110 pound cardstock. You may also want to increase your pressure to more. Be sure to also put your scoring stylus or scoring wheel in your Cricut. Place your cardstock or craft board onto your cutting mat, load the mat into the machine and press the flashing button to begin cutting. When you're done, remove the mat and flip it over onto your work surface. Then peel the mat away from your paper. This will prevent curling, which is very important for this project. Here's a tip. Use your scraper tool to remove all of the small bits that are left on your mat after cutting. Now here are all of the pieces of the display case cut out. You should have the following pieces. One big square piece. These are the walls. One triangular piece with a hole at the top. This is the attic. Four long rectangular pieces with slots in the middle. These are the sides. Four long rectangular pieces with slots at the edges. These are the floors. Two short rectangular pieces. These are the roofs. Nine small square pieces. These are the wallpaper. And one small piece with a hole in it. This is the hanger reinforcement. Step three, attach your display case pieces together. First, fold all of your scored pieces in half. There should be 10 total pieces for this 3x3 cubby display case, or 8 total pieces for the 2x2 cubby case. So fold them all in half along the score line. Use your scraper tool to make sure the fold is really crisp, but don't fold in the tabs yet. Here's what they look like all folded. Now locate the four pieces that look like this. Note that they have thin slots in the middles, rather than at the edges. These are your side pieces. Take one side piece and slide its tabs into the slots at one of the edges of a large square piece. And it doesn't matter which edge you put it on. Separate and fold down the tabs on the back to lock everything in place. Do not glue the tabs down. You'll have an opportunity to do this later if you want. Repeat with the other two side pieces, slotting their tabs into the slots parallel to the first one that you did. Fold their tabs down in the back to lock everything in place. This is what your display case will look like so far. Now locate the piece with the extra tabs on the ends. This is the top floor of your display case. Slide the slots on the top floor piece over the tops of the side pieces at one of the edges, and it doesn't matter which edge you pick. Insert the tabs of this top floor piece into the slots in the large square piece. Now take the sloped piece with slots. It looks like a triangle with a little hanger at the top. This is the attic piece. Slide the slots at the bottom of the attic piece over the tabs on the back of the square piece, like this. Note that you'll need to unfold the tabs on the side pieces at the back to fit them into the attic piece. Separate and fold down the tabs on the back to lock everything in place. Locate the three pieces that look like this. Note that they have thin slots at the edges rather than in the middle. These are your other floor pieces. Insert these floor pieces, sliding their slots over the side pieces, and then insert their tabs into the slots on a square piece. Fold their tabs down in the back to lock everything in place. You're almost done. You should have two rectangular pieces left. These are your roof pieces. Slide the roof pieces together with their slots at either end, then insert their tabs into the slots on the attic piece. Slide the tabs on the ends of the roof top floor into the slots at the end of the roof pieces to lock it in, and fold all tabs down on the back to lock everything in place. At this point, you're welcome to glue the tabs down if you'd like to do some extra reinforcement, 
but I did not. If you like the idea of reinforcing your display case further, you can cut out and glue an additional square piece, like the wall piece, onto the back. And if you plan to hang this display case, it's not a bad idea to glue on that little piece with a hole in it onto the back, matching it up to the hanger piece at the top of the attic, because that will reinforce it. Finally, the square pieces are your wallpaper. You can decorate your rooms with these squares that I've, I've just set mine in without any tape or glue so I can change them up later, but you're welcome to attach them more securely if you wish. Step four, show it off. Now you get to put your Cricut cuties or whatever you want into your display case. Keep in mind that since we use paper rather than something stiff like wood, there is a bit of flex still and your items may want to bounce in their rooms if you move or bump the display case. If this is an, if this is an issue, use a little double stick tape or poster putty to keep your items in their rooms. All right, so which is better, cardstock or craft board? I definitely vote for craft board. It feels very sturdy. But if you don't have craft board and you must use cardstock, definitely go for 80 or even 110 pound cardstock. That would be about 200 grams or thicker. I use 65 pound cardstock for the floors and sides of the display case that I created for this tutorial, and I felt the tabs just didn't want to stay in place as well as the thicker cardstock and the craft board. Uh, so if you do use 65 pound cardstock, you'll likely want to glue your tabs down to keep it all together. The one on the left was made with 65 pound cardstock and the one on the right here was made with 80 pound cardstock and you can definitely tell the difference. Now you may be wondering if you can resize this project down and yes, you totally can, but it can't go much larger and still have it fit on the Cricut cutting mat. Now it can go quite a bit smaller, but the smaller you go, the harder it's going to be to fold and assemble. So just keep that in mind, but you do have some leeway here. The best paper for this project is totally craft board. Craft board is gonna be the strongest. Um, and this is, uh, this is my craft board one and I love it the best. Now I used 80 pound cardstock for this one and I used 65 pound cardstock for this one. And basically the stronger your paper, uh, the better, it's the more sturdy it's going to be. So go as strong as you can. If you have craft board, use that. Now, if you have more than four Funko Pops or more than 10 Cricut Cuties in your collection, you can make however many display cases you need for your collection. You could even secure them together side by side with a little tape or glue if you want them to stay together. You just need to trim the roof lines at the edges to keep them close together. Now, if you're wondering where to get these super sweet little Cricut cuties. Stay tuned after the video and I will tell you all about them and how I amassed my own collection. If you have any questions about making your display case, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over in my Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters, where you can get lots of help and ideas and notifications of mystery boxes with Cricut Cuties. And it's an awesome place. We have over 300,000 crafters there right now. Now, if you need a Cricut cutting machine, I give one away every month. You can enter for your chance to win your own Cricut cutting machine at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut giveaway. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. So as soon as I showed everyone this display case, I started getting questions about what these little Cricut cuties were. Um, so like, what are they and how do you get them? So a Cricut cutie is a little collectible plastic figurine of the Cricut mascot, which is a cute Cricut. There isn't anything more than just cute. It's just a little morale booster, something to make you smile. Their heads do twist about. <laughs> I know I can twist it. There we go. <laughs> Don't want to twist it off, but that's it. Now, as to where to get the Cricut Cuties, that's the tough part. You cannot just buy Cricut Cuties outright. You can only get them with the purchase of something else or have them given to you by someone or a friend that really likes you a lot. Most people, including myself, get their Cricut Cuties from mystery boxes, specifically Cricut mystery boxes. Now, some Cricut mystery boxes have a Cricut Cutie inside, but not all do. 
And you won't randomly get a Cricut kitty just because someone in the warehouse decided to slip one in for you. Or, you know, the Cricut kitty wants to climb in the box. <laughs> if you watch an unboxing video or you read a list of mystery box contents by a reliable source and it reveals that there is a Cricut kitty, then there should be one inside the mystery box, barring any unforeseen packing errors or supply issues, of course. I currently have 15 of these little kitties, but there are more. I don't have them all. Learn more about Cricut Kitties and Cricut Mystery Boxes over at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Mystery Box. And good luck with your collection.